Okay, this video is going to show you um, how to import an image to the architectural software floor planner. So let's start with finding the floor plan that you want to actually trace uh, in, in floor planner. So this is a house that I had already picked. Um, I assume you have already picked a house as well. And you want to come down to where the floor plan is and make sure that you can zoom in in such a way that you get the entire floor plan and the size that's listed here. If you don't have a size listed here on the drawing, some floor plans don't, that's fine. You'll just have to go down into the text down here and they will always have the outside dimensions listed, um, depth and width. Now, hopefully it's obvious to you which one's depth, which one's width, but, um, or the way it's written, depth is typically front to back and width would be the side to side of the house. Um, so anyway, what you want to do is open your snipping tool. So I'm going to click this. If you're using a Chromebook, you can use control shift and the switch windows tab. Um, on a Mac, I believe it's you use the four command that's listed on your classroom though. So just snip the image. And I'm going to make sure that I get the dimensions that are listed. And there we go. Now I have my image of my floor plan. Don't worry if you have these extra uh, images or whatever you want to call these, like the heart here and this X down here. That doesn't matter because all you're going to do is trace the image. So I'm going to hit the save button. And I'll just put it in my downloads. And I'm going to call this one story house image to trace. You can call it whatever you would like and make sure that you're saving it as a JPEG. JPEG seems to be the most user friendly image version uh, or file type for this software. Others sometimes work, but it seems a little glitchy. So I'm going to hit save here. And now what you're going to want to do is go back to the internet, hopefully you have floor planner already in. If you don't, go ahead and just type floor planner and log in. You can see I'm already logged in. So I'm going to click on my account here. And up here, this dashboard will have all of the projects that you've worked on in the past. So you can see I have a few projects in there. Um, you can also click on projects to see all your different projects. I'm going to click right here, the blue plus create project. So I'm going to rename this one story, story house. And I'll just put a one on there. You can say it's in the US. You can type in the address if you would like to specify an address and so on. Um, and I don't think, you know, you don't need to do anything for a template and hit create project. So now this is how you would want to start. Um, Empty plan is if you want to draw on your own. We are going to upload an image. So you hit upload an image and now you'll see it's waiting for you to actually choose a file here. And if I go to my downloads where I saved it, there's the one story house image and I'm going to hit open. Now, if you are doing a project where you have to worry about which way the house is facing, so front door is facing east, which is what I wanted for my project in this case, I'm going to rotate it so this being the front door is rotating, rotated to the right. Oh, and I got it backwards. So I'm going to say negative 90. There we go. So now the front door is facing east. So that is all set. And now what you want to do, uh, first of all, make sure you're in feet. Your project should automatically go there if you did your settings right. Um, do you see this black plus? This is more or less the, the center of the house or like an anchor point. So I'm going to pick up my image and I'm going to put it, you can put it so that the corner's on the anchor point. I actually am going to put it so the center of the house is more or less there. And that will really affect how your house zooms with preset uh, camera settings that you'll use in the future. So it's not crucial that you get it exactly right. It just, you want it to be somewhere over that plus. Okay. Now that I have moved my image, you can see I lost the menu that was up here. So to get that back, 
we are currently under the info tab of the project. We want to go into, into this one, the hammer, which is like the tools. And you want to click down here for background settings. So that's the image. The image is considered a background. Now, right now, the problem with the image as we have it is that our image says that it needs to be 28 feet wide. But if I measure this, it is not 28 feet wide. It is around 20. So we're not horribly off. It's not only a foot or two, but it's still nowhere close to what we need. So I'm going to click on background settings. And what you need to do here is say set scale. So it tells you right here, you want to draw a line next to something you know the real life size of. So we obviously know that this width here, or sorry, I guess it's the depth now, is 32 feet. So I'm going to um, click on this. But before I do that, I want to scale in. If you rotate your mouse, your middle mouse button, you can get in there. Um, or zoom in how you normally do on whatever device you're using. To pan, you can't pan with the middle mouse button. That instantly starts drawing your line. So that I just that was like a mistake I wanted to show you. I hit escape. And if you want to zoom really close in and you want to pan, what you want to do is hit the space bar and then move your mouse. And you'll see now I, I'm simply hitting the space bar and I can pan around or panning means to pick up the image and move it. So now I'm going to click to draw my line. And it's just easier to zoom back out and move over and then zoom in. If you zoom over where you want to zoom into, it'll zoom right to that spot. So there we go. Now I'm going to zoom out so you can see what I traced. And you can see that I have a line that's going from the front to the back of the house, and it wants me to enter the length, the known length of this. So I'm going to say it's 32 feet. And hit check. And you can see my image got bigger. Um, and so now what I would suggest is do it one more time because the first time you were, you know, decently far off. So zoom in and try it again. The more times you do this, the more accurate your dimensioning will be as you're getting closer and closer to that black line every time. So I'm going to type 32 feet again. And it didn't move too much. So we must be good. But rather than just assuming that you're at the right size, what I would like you to now do is I'm going to get out of that and go to your info tab. And I would like you to draw a dimension to make sure that you got it at the right size. So I'm going to click up there. Oh, sorry. I just tried to, I did exactly what I told you not to do. Um, I'm going to delete that dimension to pan. I'm very used to using Revit settings to pan. You can't hold your mouse down. You have to hit the space bar. So and now I'm going to zoom back in to make sure I get pretty close to that corner. And we are only off by an eighth of an inch for that dimension. And I'm going to call that close enough. Um, one, we don't even know if the arrows are wrong when I placed the dimension versus the scaling. So you want to do the same thing going this direction just to show that you have the right uh, width and depth of the house. And if you're doing a project or an assignment where you have to um, snip this image, go ahead and snip that once you have both dimensions there. And I would like to see the dimensions in such a way that you actually could see them easily. Unfortunately, you can't just drag that dimension and uh, move it like you could in Revit, so you would have to move these up and down. And that might change the accuracy of your dimension line. So I don't know that I want you to do that. So why don't you just leave that in there the way it is now and snip that image. That's it for now.